So chapter 9 is on page 623 and it's about quadratic equations and introduction to functions. We're going to cover only quadratic equations and we're going to start with section 9.1 on page 624 and this is solving quadratic equations. Solving quadratic equations by the square root property by the square root property on the same page we want to find the definition or the description of that property it says that if u is an algebraic expression is an algebraic expression and d is a positive real number is a positive real number then u square equals d has exactly exactly two solutions two solutions so u equals the square root of d and u equals minus the square root of d it looks as or or so and we can write these two solutions in a single expression as u equals plus minus the square root of d so we're going to understand we're going to apply this property in, in the following example so we have example one on page 625 so we're going to solve uh, by the square root property by the square root property so the first problem is going to be just x square equals 49 so the first thing is that we have this x square and because of that, this is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation. To solve that equation by using the square root property, what we're going to do is that we're going to take the square root on both sides of the equation. But on the radical, the radical that is on the uh, right uh, hand side, we're going to right plus and minus because that's the square root property the square root the square root property means that any time that you take the square root of any number you're going to get a positive radical and a negative radical so the next steps is just uh, most of the same that we have been practicing before so you know that in this case, the exponent and the radical cancel to each other. So you get x equals plus minus the square root of 49. Now, the square root of 49 can be written as a perfect square. So when you can write the radical as a perfect square, you should do it to simplify the, the, the radical. So 7 squared is going to be 49 so and then we can cancel this and this so we're gonna end up with x equals plus minus 7 so this means that uh, there are two solutions as the um, square root, root property indicated before so the solutions are negative 7 comma positive 7 so that's the solution for this uh, quadratic equation. Uh, 
I'm going to solve uh, two more exercises corresponding to the same example. So let's work on that now. So we have now the second part is B and we have the following quadratic equation. 4x squared equals 20. So again, uh, first we need to isolate x squared. So that's the first step. We isolate the uh, quadratic term and with coefficient 1. That's what we want. So in this case, we have 4x squared equals 20. So we need to divide by 4 both sides of the equation and then we're going to get x squared equals 5. So the next step is we're going to take the square root on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to take the square root on the left hand side and also the square root on the right hand side. But remember this radical is going to be plus minus. So then the next step is that we cancel the radical sign and the exponent and we end up with x on the left hand side and we still have plus minus radical 5 on the right hand side now this is just that x is equal to negative radical 5 or x equals positive radical 5 and this radical cannot be uh, broken into uh, two uh, factors, one of those being a perfect square. So that's the final answer. So x, the solutions are negative radical 5, comma, positive radical 5. So that's the answer for this problem. And then we have the last case of example 1 is just 2x squared minus 5 equals to 0. So again, we need to isolate x squared. So that's the first step. Isolate x squared. So uh, in this case, to isolate x squared, we add 5 to both sides of the equation. So we're going to get 2x squared equals positive 5. Then uh, we're going to divide by the coefficient of x squared to be able to, to have the, the x squared um, itself. So it's gonna have, we're going to have x squared equals 5 over 2. Now we're going to take the square root on both sides of the equation. So we're going to have x squared, the square root on the left hand side plus minus the square root of 5 over 2. So here on the left hand side we get uh, use x because we can cancel the exponent on the radical. So the, the final answer is just x equals plus minus the square root of 5 over 2. Uh, here we're going to, we need to rationalize because remember we don't like radicals in the denominator. So here we have x equals plus minus the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. So to rationalize this, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the radical that we want to eliminate. So we're going to get plus minus the square root of 10 because 5 times 2 is 10 and in the denominator we're going to get 2 times 2 is going to be 2 square and the radical. Then we can simplify by removing the exponent and the radical sign. So we're going to get plus minus the square root of 10 over 2. So there are again Two solutions. The first one is negative square root of 10 over 2 and the second one is the square root of 10 over 2, the positive one.
So that's the first problem. So now we're going to work uh, another example. We're going to work example uh, two. So let's see. Example two is on page. Um, 626. So now we have, uh, we're going to solve by the square root of property. We're going to solve by the square uh, root property. The following quadratic equation is x minus 5 square equals 16. So that's the equation that I'm going to solve. So now you can see here that the entire parenthesis is a square. So the entire parenthesis is an algebraic expression. This is an algebraic expression. And this is equivalent to writing u square equals 16, where u equals x minus 5. So I'm just uh, writing this just for you to see that this is, again, uh, a problem that can, that can be solved by using the square root property because this is u square equals d. So we can take the square root on both sides of the equation and we're going to get the solution. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just we have x minus 5 square equals 16. We're going to take the square root on both sides because this is already uh, uh, an expression that is a square. And on the right hand side, we're going to write plus minus the square root of 16. So we do that because we can cancel this exponent and this radical. So we end up only with the parentheses x minus 5 equals plus minus and 16 is a, is a perfect square so we can write 4 square here and if we do if we do that we can cancel the exponent and the radical sign so we're going to get x minus 5 equals plus minus 4 and again this is just two equations the first one is x minus 5 equals negative 4 and the second one is x minus 5 equals positive 4. So I'm writing the two equations and then I'm going to solve for x because I haven't finished. Because I didn't have here just x squared. I have a parenthesis square, an expression, an algebraic expression square. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides of the equation in this case. So I'm going to get x equals 1 for the first one and in this case I'm going to add 5 to both sides of the equation I'm going to get x equals 9 so I have two solutions so we should verify the solution so I didn't do that in on the first example but I should have done that before so I'm going to do it now with example 2 so we need to test the solution so I have to evaluate the original equation for each of the solutions. So first, x equals 1. So uh, by evaluating, we mean that we can re we need to replace every x with 1 in this case. So I'm going to write 1 minus 5 squared equals 16. So 1 minus 5 is going to be negative 4 squared equals 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 is going to be 16. So this is true. So that means that this is a solution. Let's check the other one. So we need to evaluate again the original equation x minus 5 squared equals 16. But now we're going to evaluate that equation for x equals 9. So we're going to replace now x with 9. So by doing that we're going to get 9 minus 5 square equals 16. So 
9 minus 5 is going to be 4 square equals 16. So 4 square is just 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So this is also true. So that means that uh, both x equals 1 and x equals 9 are solutions for this uh, quadratic equation. So I'm going to solve one more problem and then I'm going to give you problems for you to solve. And in that we're going to finish the first section of this chapter and two more sections and then we finish everything corresponding to this course. So let's go on example three. So example three is on page six twenty seven. So we have example three. So we're going to solve by using the square root property. And the problem is uh, x minus 1 square equals 5. So again, I have an algebraic expression contained in this parenthesis that is already square so I'm just going to take the square root on both sides of the equation uh, this is going to be plus minus the square root of 5 so the important thing is that you have on the left hand side a quadratic expression so in this case I have a parenthesis square if I had a, an extra thing here plus something then I need to move that extra thing to the other side in order to isolate the perfect square. Remember, this is a perfect square. Uh, so, when you have a perfect square and you take the square root, we can eliminate both the exponent and the radical. That's uh, when you have a perfect square like x minus 1 square. And on the right hand side, we only have plus minus the square root of 5. We cannot simplify this radical because uh, phi is not a perfect square and we cannot write phi as a as the product of a perfect square and non-perfect square so we leave this radical in that way so now we're going to write the two equations that are uh, contained here in this in this uh, equation so we have x minus 1 equals negative radical phi or we have x minus 1 equals positive radical phi we're going to solve for x, so we need to add 1 to both sides of the equation. And remember, you cannot combine a radical with a quantity that is not a radical. So you need to write, in this case, we're going to write first 1 minus a radical 5. And on the left-hand side, we only have x. The same thing on this uh, second equation. We're going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. And again... We can cancel negative 1 and 1 here, so you get x on the left-hand uh, side. But on the right-hand side, we have a radical and a number, which is not is not a radical. So we cannot combine them, so we need to write them apart. So I write first the non-radical part, and then the radical part, which is plus square root of 5. And that's it. We cannot do anything else. So we're going to write the solution as... 1 minus the square root of 5, comma, 1 plus the square root of 5. Okay? And those are the solutions for this problem. So let's see. You're going to work examples. So you're going you're gonna to work exercises from 9 on 1 exercise set on page... 631. So I have many exercises for you. Uh, so let's see. Uh, the first one is x squared equals 100. Then we have number 6 is x squared equals 13. Number 10 is 3x squared equals 75 
then we have 16 3x squared minus 5 equal to 0 22 is x plus 6 square equal 144 28 is y plus 7 square equals 5 okay solve these exercises first and then i'm going to show you how to solve another kind of exercise by using the same square root property so i have some problems on on the same exercise set 9.1 exercise set that i'm going to solve for you because they are not in the in the uh, part the previous part in the section they are not described how to solve these problems so they say for example that we have problem 31 is just x square plus 4x plus 4 equals 16 and they say that uh, we're going to solve each quadratic equation by first factoring the perfect square trinomial on the left side then apply the square root property and simplify radicals if possible so the idea is that this should be or this might be a a perfect square trinomial a perfect square trinomial so how do we know that this is a perfect square trinomial so the way that we're going to check that is going to be slightly different than we did before before when we were, were trying to factor this kind of trinomials we checked that the first one was a perfect square the first term the last term another perfect square then we wrote this a perfect square and we got two times a b I, I think you might remember that but now the way that we're going to check that this is a perfect square we're going to start with the middle term the middle coefficient so we're going to divide the middle coefficient remember the middle coefficient usually is b so that's the middle coefficient the middle coefficient of a quadratic equation so usually you have the quadratic equation written written as ax squared plus bx plus c that's a quadratic um, uh, expression it's an equation if you equate this to to, uh, to something so the middle coefficient b when you divide the middle coefficient b by 2 and you square that that should be equal to c if that if this is true if this is true then the trinomial is is a per, is a perfect square so let's see whether this is the case so i'm going to write again x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 16 that's my original problem i have here 4 that's my the middle coefficient divided by 2 i'm going to square it so 4 divided by 2 is 2 square so 2 squared equals 4 and this is equal to c so that means that yeah this is true this is a, a, a perfect square trinomial so now how do we write this as a perfect square trinomial we're gonna remember we're gonna find or we're gonna rewrite the first term as a perfect square the last term as a perfect square so we're gonna use this x we're gonna use this number two and we're gonna use the sign from the middle coefficient which is a plus sign so these are the the three components the x two and the plus sign from the middle coefficient and we will, we can write this as a square 
So now my trinomial is written as a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So we're going to be able now to take the square root of that perfect square and also the square root on the right hand side. So you can cancel now this radical sign and this exponent. So we're going to get x plus 2 equals plus minus. And 16 is, a, is another perfect square. It's just 4 squared. So we can write now x plus 2 equals plus minus 4 because the exponent and the radical uh, sign cancel to each other. So we have two equations. The first one is x plus 2 equals negative 4. And the second equation is x plus 2 equals positive 4. So now we finish this by uh, solving for x. So in this case, I'm going to subtract 2. So I'm going to get x equals negative 6. And here I'm going to subtract 2. 2. I'm going to get x equals positive 2. So I find these two uh, solutions. So I'm going to write this as negative 6, positive 2. But the crucial part of this problem was rewriting a trinomial as a perfect square. And we now uh, mention a different way to prove that you have a, a trinomial that is a perfect square. And what was that uh, uh, formula? Is the middle term divided by 2, and then you square that, then you should get c. If you get c, which is this term, then that means the entire, the entire thing is a perfect square. Also, it's important, uh, this, uh, the leading coefficient is 1, okay, a equals 1. Otherwise, uh, this is not going to go in, the, in this way. It's going to be a different approach. So now you're going to solve uh, some problems by applying this rule. And if you do that, this is a preparation for the next section. So let me just give you uh, a couple of problems. So they are from the same SSI set on page 631. So you're going to solve 32. 32 is x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 25. And we have 36, uh, that's x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 3. So I have two more problems for you. And then we're going to continue with the next section. So now in, uh, in section 9.2, page 635, we're going to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. So, uh, what is the meaning of this completing the square? Completing the square is, I'm going to write here, completing the square is just adding, adding b over 2 square to both sides of a, a quadratic equation to obtain to obtain a, a perfect square trinomial on one side. So your book has on page 635 the definition. I'm going to write the definition. It's uh, the same thing here that I express with words. Uh, it's expressed by using uh, algebraic notation. It says if 
x square plus bx is a binomial then by adding b over 2 square b over 2 square which is the square of half the coefficient of x of x uh, a perfect square a perfect square trinomial will result will result and then the formula so they say that is Uh, if you have x squared plus bx and you add b over 2 squared, this is a perfect square trinomial that you can write as x plus b over 2 squared. So that's what we're going to do now uh, on this section. So we're going to start with example 1. Example 1 on page 635. So it says complete the square for each binomial. Complete the square for each binomial. So be careful, these, these are not equations yet, so these are just pieces of an equation. They are giving you, for example, use this part, x squared plus ax. That's what is given. So this is not an equation. This is just a portion, a fraction, or a piece of an equation. And they want you to use these two terms, uh, this binomial, to generate, to complete a trinomial that is going to be a perfect square. So, this is a, remember a should be equal to 1, otherwise it's not easy to do that. And b equals, uh, sorry, is 8 in this case, b equals a. So we're going to find, we're going to add b over 2 square. So uh, let's do that. So in this case, we're going to add, we're going to have x square plus ax plus b is 8 over 2 square. So we're going to get x squared plus ax plus a over 2 is 4 square. So if you do that, you're going to get x squared plus ax plus 16. So this is a perfect square trinomial. But we don't care about the perfect square trinomial. What we want is the perfect square that we can get directly from here. So we're going to get it by writing x plus what is inside of this parenthesis a over 2 square. So the final answer is x plus 4 squared. That's the perfect square that we get by completing the square. Completing the square is that there is something that is missing here, that we are missing. So we're going to find that something. That's completing the square. That is the meaning of completing the square. So let's work one more problem. Two more problems. We have x squared minus 14x, and that's it. So this is just a part of an equation. 
we want to complete the square so we want to add something here and that something is going to give us the opportunity to write the trinomial as a perfect square so what is that something so we have b over 2 square so what is b over 2 square so we're gonna, we're gonna write our binomial as x and then minus 14 over 2 square so this is just x minus 7 square and that's it i'm not writing the the trinomial because we don't need a trinomial what we need is just this perfect square but of, of course we can complete the exercise by writing x squared minus 14x plus uh, negative 14 over 2 is going to be negative 7 squared so that means that the trinomial that is a perfect square is x squared minus 14x plus 49 so that's the trinomial that is a perfect square and this is the way that you write it as a perfect square so now we have the last part of this exercise so we have x squared plus 5x again this is an incomplete trinomials we need to add something we need to complete the, the square so we're gonna write uh, here 5 over 2 square that's what we need to add here so we're gonna have x square plus 5x plus 5 over 2 square so the final answer is just uh, with, with respect to the trinomial is just x square plus 5x plus 25 over 4 but what I want is I want the the perfect square the perfect square is going to be obtained by writing here x which is the square root of this part and then what is inside of this parenthesis is positive so don't forget the sign you need to write a sign either a positive or negative it depends it depends on this sign most of the time all the time so that's the, the answer so let's now use that procedure of completing the square to solve quadratic equations that's the purpose of completing the square that we're going to have a way to to get the solution so so now we're gonna we're gonna solve quadratic equations by completing the square by completing the square so you're gonna have something you're gonna have like uh, a x squared plus b x and then we're gonna have uh, another quantity let's say it's gonna be k then to complete the square we're gonna do many things the first one we need to check we need to be sure that the leading coefficient a is 1 if not you need to divide everything if not divide both sides of the equation divide both sides of the equation by a by that leading coefficient then once you check that you're gonna make room for something here but if you make room here you're gonna make room also here and what is gonna go in, inside of these squares you're gonna put there b over 2 square goes here and goes here and in that way the left hand side can be written as x plus b over 2 square and the right hand side is going to be just k plus b over 2 square and then you can proceed with the rest okay so 
and then you you can apply now the square uh, root property that we learned in, uh, from the first section of this chapter so let's work example two example two on page 636 so we're gonna solve by completing the square solve by completing the square so the first problem is x squared plus ax equals negative 15 so that's my first problem so the first thing I'm going to make room first I'm I'm checking that the leading coefficient is 1 so perfect a equals 1 perfect now we're gonna make room for for uh, the term that I need to incorporate here to complete the square and if I add something on the left hand side I need to add that I need to add that something uh, to the right hand side too okay the same quantity if I add 100 here I need to add 100 here so what is the value that I'm going to add is b over 2 square so I'm going to write here add uh, this is the second part you add this to both sides the first part was just checking that a equals 1 the leading coefficient so let's add b over 2 square on both sides of the equation so I'm going to have x squared plus ax plus 8 over 2 square minus 15 plus a over 2 square so I'm adding the same quantity on both sides of the equation now I don't need to do any operations here I just need to write the perfect square so this is gonna be the x here so you cancel the square and you cancel the square here so you write 8 over 2 okay thus with respect to the left hand side with respect to the right hand side I'm going to simplify this operation so a over 2 is 4 square then I have here I need to simplify this if possible it's just 4 square then I have here negative 15 plus 16 because 4 times 4 is going to be 16 so now we need to combine uh, like terms on the right hand side negative 15 plus positive 16 is just going to be positive 1 then it's time for us to apply the square root property so meaning that we need to take the square root on both sides but on the right hand side we're going to have two radicals plus and minus square root of one now we can cancel we can cancel the exponent and the radical sign so we end up with x plus four on the left hand side on the right hand side we can write the radical as a perfect square and if we do that now we're going to be able to cancel the radical sign and the exponent so we get x plus 4 equals plus minus 1 so now I have two equations that I need to solve the first one is x plus 4 equals negative 1 or the other one is x plus 4 equals positive 1 so one is negative 1 the other is positive 1 and then we finish this work so I'm going to solve for x so I need to subtract 4 so I get x equals negative 5 or I need to subtract 4 from here too so I get x equals negative 3 so I have negative 3 and negative 5 those are my solutions for this problem you need to test the solutions on the original equation but that's something that you're going to do as an exercise 
uh, at home. So let's continue with the other problem. So we have a second part uh, corresponding to example two. So the second part is a quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 2. Okay, so we're going to move, and this is equal to 0. We're going to move this uh, term to the other side to uh, make room for the, for the, uh, to complete the square. So let's do that. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. In that way, I get just a binomial on the left-hand side, the binomial that we have been using to complete the square. And this is going to be equal to negative 2. So now I'm going to check the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is 1. So the leading coefficient is 1. Perfect. Now we're going to add b over 2 squared on both sides of the equation. So let's do that. So I'm going to have x squared minus 6x plus, and b is negative 6. I'm writing b with the sign, okay? Negative 6 over 2 squared equals negative 2 plus negative 6 over 2 squared. So I'm adding b over 2 square to both sides of the equation. Now, here, this is just a perfect square, so I don't simplify your person. I just write my binomial, which is going to be x minus 6 over 2 square. That's uh, what goes on the left-hand side. So I'm just uh, bringing down negative 6 over 2, I'm removing the square, I'm bringing down x, I'm removing the square, and then I enclose this in a parenthesis, and then I have the square outside. On the right-hand side, I just need to perform the indicated operation, so I have negative 6 over 2 is negative 3 square. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3, and I have this square here. Here I'm going to have negative 3 squared is 9. So finally I get negative 2 plus 9 is going to be positive 7. So now is the time for us to apply the square root property, right? The square root property. So we're going to take the square root on both sides of the equation, but we have a positive and a, radic a negative radical on the right-hand side. Now we can cancel the radical sign and the exponent. So this is going to be x minus 3 equals plus minus the square root of 7. And then we solve for x, so we add to both sides of this equation. So I get x equals, I'm going to write first the non-radicals, which is 3, positive 3, and then the radical with the signs, plus minus square root of 7. So this is the solution. We can write the solution, writing first 3 minus the square root of 7, comma 3 plus square root of 7. So that is the solution for this problem. So I have one more problem, and then you're going to have uh, to solve uh, uh, several exercises to practice this, uh, which is very important, a very important uh, procedure in, in algebra. So let's go one one more example. We have example 3 on page 637. So we're going to solve by completing the square. So the equation is 2x squared plus 5x minus 
4 equal to 0. So first we need to get only a binomial on the left hand side. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I get 2x squared plus 5x equals 4. Now we're going to start checking conditions first. Is a equals to 1? No. No, then we need to divide by a both sides. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I'm going to have 2x squared over 2 plus 5x over 2 equals 4 over 2. So we divide everything by the leading coefficient by a. So this gives me x squared plus 5 over 2 x equals 2. Now we're gonna uh, complete the square so we need to make room to complete the square on the left hand side. So we're gonna add we're gonna add b over 2 square to both sides of the equation, right? To both sides of the equation. So we're going to add b is 5 over 2. 5 over 2 over 2 again. So this is 2 times 2 square. And that's the same thing that we're going to add on the right hand side. We're going to add. 5 over 2 times 2, because we're dividing by 2, square. Okay, let's continue with these operations. On the left-hand side, we only care about the perfect square. So what is the perfect square? It's going to be x and plus 5 over 2. 2 times 2. I'm writing everything square. On the right hand side, I'm going to have 2 plus 5 over 2 times 2 square. Now let's simplify things. Here I'm going to have x plus 5 over 4 because 2 times 2 is just 4. And I'm going to have on the right hand side 2 plus uh, 5 over 4 square. So we're going to square the numerator and we're going to square the denominator. So on the left hand side, I still have the same thing. On the right hand side, now I have 5 times 5 is 25, and here 16. Okay, now we're going to work on this. This is like having. 2 over 1, so I'm going to add these two fractions. So I'm going to have x plus 5 over 4 square. And to add these two, they have different denominators. So we're going to multiply by 16 both the numerator and the denominator to get the same denominator. So I have x plus 5 over 4 square this is 32 over 16 plus 25 over 16 so I'm writing every time all the terms uh, on the left hand side and on the right hand side so I can combine these two so this is gonna be uh, 57 over 16 now it's time for us to uh, apply the square root property. So we're going to apply the square root property. So meaning that we're going to take the square root on both sides of the equation. Okay. So now we, we can cancel the radical and the exponent. So on the left hand side we have x plus 5 
over 4. This is going to be equal to plus minus the square root of 57 over the square root of 16. So 16 can be written as a, as a, as a perfect square. So let's do that. So this is going to be plus minus square root of 57 over the square root of 4 square plus 16. So now we can cancel one more radical and one more exponent. So we have x plus 5 over 4 equals plus minus square root of 57 over 4. So now we're going to find the two solutions. So let's write the two equations. The first one is x plus 5 over 4 equals negative square root of 57 over 4 and the other one is x plus 5 over 4 equals positive square root of 57 over 4. Then we solve for x. So in this case we're going to subtract negative 5 over 4 on both sides of the equation. So we end up with x equals negative 5 over 4 minus the square root of 57 over 4. And on the other case, we're going to subtract 5 over 4, 2. So we get x equals negative 5 over 4 plus square root of 57 over 4. So the final answer is just the following. Uh, since we have a common denominator, we can just write the first one is just negative 5 minus square root of 57 over 4, comma. The other one is going to be negative 5 plus square root of 57 over a common denominator 4. So these are the solutions for this problem. So now is your turn. And with that, we're going to finish uh, section 9.2. So we have um, 9.2 exercise set on page 638. So you're going to solve. Uh, each quadratic equation by completing the square. So solve each quadratic equation by completing the square. So we have uh, problem 14 is x squared plus 6x equals negative a. Then we have problem 16 is x squared minus 2x equals 8. Then we have problem 18, x squared minus 4x equals negative 2. Uh, Problem 20 is x squared plus 6x minus 5 equals 0. Uh, problem 24 is x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals 0 and finally problem 30 so 2x squared minus x minus 1 equal to 0 so solve at, at least uh, two or three problems and then you can solve the other ones uh, later if you want to continue with me uh, to finish uh, the next section
today. Otherwise, we're going to spend more time on this section and we can continue on Monday.